Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's bad enough the U.S. is the biggest prison nation on the face of the earth. Now, it talks about freedom, but it jails more of its citizens than any other nation on the planet. Now, it's bad enough they did that on U.S. soil, but do you know they are doing that in the Pacific Ocean as well? U.S. Coast Guard operating secret floating prisons in Pacific Ocean. And this is November 28th, 2017, and I will leave the link to this article in the description box. Now, I'm going to get into this article before I play the actual video. If you followed the war on terror at all, you're almost certainly familiar with the U.S. detention facility at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, a U.S. prison that exists outside the realm of the U.S. justice system. Now it turns out there's a secret U.S. detention system in the war on drugs, too. And this one is aboard U.S. Coast Guard cutters sailing in the Pacific Ocean. And these ships are actually prisons that you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Floating prisons. In an effort to staunch the flow of cocaine and other hard drugs from South America to Central America and points north, Coast Guard cutters have been deployed further and further from the shores in the Pacific Ocean. When these cutters capture a boat carrying drugs, the smugglers are brought onto ships and kept shackled to the deck, sometimes outside in the elements, until the Coast Guard makes arrangements for them to be transported back to the U.S. for trial. Shackling on boats. Doesn't that sound familiar, y'all? Shackling people on boats. But this isn't a wait of just a few hours or days. Often these waits can last weeks or months, according to new reporting from the New York Times. Coast Guard officials say they can do this because the drug smugglers aren't under arrest until they reach U.S. shores. But some of the worst cases are drawing criticism, even from Coast Guard officials. So they are shackled on the ship. You know, trust me, being held under U.S. custody, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. even when they're not on U.S. shores. See, th these people don't follow no rules, ladies and gentlemen. See, you're being led by the most immoral people to ever live on the face of the earth. They don't go by no rules. They go by, they make up their rules as they go along. That's why there's always confusion. Seth Freed Wessler reported this story for the Times. He says a combination of U.S. agreements with Latin American countries and the U.S. Maritime Drug Law Enforcement Act allows the U.S. to take this action. Wessler spoke with the world's Carol Hills about his reporting in these floating Guantanamos on the Pacific Ocean. The Coast Guard usually has a reputation for being the good guys out there, rescuing people, apprehending bad guys. We've done stories about that. I take it it's a, a little bit more complicated. It is. The Coast Guard has a broad mission. It does search and rescue, enforces fishery laws. It enforces drug laws on the ocean. And what few people know is that the U.S. Coast Guard has actually been deployed in recent years deep into the Pacific Ocean to interdict 
drug smugglers moving between South America, Colombia, Ecuador, and Central America, where the drugs often cocaine are dropped off and then often moved up through Mexico. These Coast Guard ships are deployed deep into the Pacific, sometimes thousands of miles from the nearest U.S. port where they're detaining suspected smugglers and holding them aboard these Coast Guard cutters. What I found in my reporting is that these detainees, men who are moving cocaine in the Pacific Ocean, you write about some Ecuadorians who are out there transporting drugs and they end up shackled for many, many days on a Coast Guard boat. Give us a quick thumbnail sketch of this one guy in particular, Johnny Arcentels, and how he ended up there. He's a fisherman from a coastal town in Ecuador and was having a, a particularly economically rough year and made the decision to take a job smuggling cocaine off the shores of Ecuador. He really didn't know all that much about what he was doing. As he was moving this cocaine on a boat with three other men, other Ecuadorian men and a Colombian man, they were approaching Central America, approaching Guatemala, and the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard intercepted that boat and pulled these men off. For the next 70 days, Mr. Arcentels and the other men he was detained with were held, always chained by their ankle and to the deck of the ship or to a cable running along one of these large Coast Guard or Navy ships for 70 days. He was removed from ship to ship as these Coast Guard cutters went about their patrol picking up more cocaine in the Pacific Ocean. So this Arcento and other guy, they were on a ship. This is a Coast Guard ship, and they're basically exposed to the elements and basically shackled and not getting much food. Doesn't that sound familiar? Boy, these people, don't they never do anything different. They just repeat the same thing over and over. So predictable. How can the Coast Guard get away with keeping people under those conditions when the men haven't even been charged? The Coast Guard make the argument that these people are not formally under arrest until they get to the U.S. So it, that's a kidnapping then. So if you're detaining them, but they're not under arrest, but you're dragging them off to the U.S., then that, that, doesn't that sound like a kidnapping? They're simply being held while the Coast Guard deals with the logistical challenges of trying to get these men onto shore into a plane and flown to Florida where they'll be prosecuted. Courts have generally brought the government's argument, the argument by the Coast Guard and the by federal prosecutors that these logistical delays are legitimate as it's hard enough to get people back. The reality is that when the Coast Guard has had to move people more quickly, they do. Very often detainees are brought to port in one of these cutters then placed in a hidden room in a helicopter hangar and in a room below deck and hidden there for the day while the Coast Guard cutters refuels or the Coast Guard crew get a bit of a break and then are back out to sea. So there are these days that people in a Coast Guard, in the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard officials I interviewed, though really they are actually unreasonable considering that 
they're near an airport. Somebody could be put on a plane and brought back to the United States as we've made this decision to prosecute more and more people. These delays have grown longer and longer. What we're seeing now is a sort of carting people around, carting suspected drug smugglers around the ocean an average of 18 days. Very often longer than that as the government waits to transport people to courts in Florida. Now, Donald Trump's chief of staff, General John Kelly, who approves this, ladies and gentlemen, he plays a key role in expanding the reach of the Coast Guard in this way. Well, John Kelly was in charge of the Southern Command, the Department of Defense Area of Operation in Latin America that's in charge of managing the drug war in Latin America. He was the head of the Southern Command between 2012 and 2016, then retired. Under the Trump administration, he became head of the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees the Coast Guard. On two occasions, he had a role in these operations, and John Kelly has really been a proponent of the idea. He's called the drug smuggling in Central America extensionally a threat to the U.S. and the idea that we need to push our borders outward further and further away from our actual borders in order to defend the homeland that's led to this effort to enter Dick, um, drugs far and far away from the United States in places where drug smugglers actually really have very little idea where their drugs are headed. So Johnny Arcento and other men we've spoken to, they're not thinking about these drugs, you know, where these drugs are going. The drugs are moving from South America to Central America as far as they're concerned. It's out of their control after that. But they're arrested. They're arresting people in international waters, often on foreign boats, thousands of miles from the United States. Okay, so they're transporting drugs from South to Central America and then the U.S. comes in with their prison ship and snatch everybody up and brings them to America. Okay. So the Coast Guard is arresting these people in these boats, and it's not clear whether the drugs on these boats are going to the U.S. Ultimately, most of the cocaine on these smugglers, small is probably headed for the U.S., but some of it may be going to other markets, to European markets, to Australian markets, or elsewhere. It's not always clear that the drugs are coming here. And in fact, the circuit court in California has said that the U.S. can't prosecute these cases unless they can prove that the drugs were headed to the United States. But then again, like I said, when do these folks follow any rules or guidelines? They just simply don't. That they're actually intended to show up there. And that's one of the reasons why federal prosecutors prefer to bring these cases to Florida, where the burden of proof is not required. Oh, so they won't send these people to California, which is probably closest, they send them to Florida. Whatever happens to Johnny or Sentils? How many days was he out there on these ships? He was picked up in September of 2014. And for the next 70 days, he was held aboard a series of Coast Guard cutters and Navy frigates. Frigates as he was moved around the Pacific Ocean. 
he described the experience of feeling like he really might disappear. He didn't know that he was going to be brought to the United States. Wasn't being allowed to call his family, wondering, does my family think I died? He was ultimately brought to the shores to Central America and told, you're going to be headed over to the Drug Enforcement Administration now and brought to the United States to face prosecution after more than two months held aboard these ships. So it sounds like this guy was never intending to come to the United States. He was just going from South to Central America and got intercepted by the U.S., and so that's, how was that on, never mind. I, I, I'm trying to make logic out of it, and I shouldn't be doing that <laughs> for many reasons. He was brought to the U.S. and charged criminally under drug trafficking laws and was sentenced to 10 years to a decade in federal prison. He's now in a federal prison in New Jersey. The community he comes from in central coast of Ecuador, many men have left on these smuggling trips. More than a year ago, there was a major earthquake in Ecuador that left families in dire economic straits. Since then, there have been more and more people leaving. In fact, his son-in-law decided not long after the earthquake to take one of these jobs and left home. He didn't tell anyone and disappeared. Days later, was picked up by the Coast Guard. He was also sentenced to a decade in U.S. federal prison. The question about the legality of U.S. Coast Guard detention practices has not been raised in the international context in criminal courts. It seems to me they're just grabbing anybody that's not really in U.S. shores and just bringing them to the United States to be prosecuted. Okay. What about the shame factor? This is a practice of detention that until now hasn't really been known. I wrote to dozens of men and received letters back from many of these men who been detained on these Coast Guard ships, describing the conditions of their confinement, describing what sound to me like real terror for them on the high seas. Those are stories that hadn't been told before. You sound almost like the pirate days. Are they allowed to use a proper bathroom? No. The bathrooms on these boats are very different ship to ship. They're provided essentially buckets to use as toilets on some of the boats. Oh, that's disgusting. And these men are then required to clean the buckets themselves and dump them off the edge of the ship. Do you know how bad that smells? Oh, they describe that as a really uh, terrible, disgusting process. And the Coast Guard says our ships aren't equipped as detention centers. We do not have facilities here. This is what we've got. In fact, I spoke to Coast Guard commanders who are really uncomfortable about the conditions on their ships and uncomfortable about the amount of time people are held. I have evidence of people being held upward 70 days. A Coast Guard official told me people have been held for 90 days. Can you imagine being shackled and held on a ship for 90 days and you got to pee and shit in a damn bucket? Oh, that's disgusting. But the Coast Guard, oh, well, I guess it's similar to what our ancestor went through, but I don't even think they gave them buckets. But the Coast Guard has no clear rules about how long they can hold people. When you talk to Coast Guard officials and ask them about these things, you've researched and found out uh, what do they say. 
are they proud of this or are they a little bit wary of what's going on? Many of the Coast Guard officials that I talked to were really uncomfortable about the detention conditions and the amount of time that people were being held during their detention. I really felt that officials thought people need to be moved off the boats more quickly and again are uncomfortable about the conditions that they have um, to hold people in. Have you talked with the families? Yes. Many families, in fact, believe their loved ones, husbands, fathers, sons, had disappeared. It's not unheard of for fishermen to disappear in the sea. For these fishermen, the ocean is a geography of their life. And so when I talk to our centils, for example, about the sea, he said, to me, the ocean used to be a place that for me represented freedom, but now it's like a prison in the open ocean. And all of these men say, we understand that we've broke laws. We understand that we made these decisions. We understand that we're going to be punished for this. The question is that they raise, how are we in the United States right now? And they raise a good point. I don't understand how they're being snatched in international waters and being brought to the United States when they weren't even heading to the United States. They were heading from South America to Central America. But then again, like I said, when does America ever follow any rules anywhere in the world? I'm going to go ahead and play this video. It's stopped for you. Get to Nissan for big sale. In the war on drugs, the U.S. Coast Guard. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Okay is reportedly turning its cutter ships into floating prisons. In fighting the flow of cocaine coming from South and Central America into the U.S., the Coast Guard is deploying ships farther and farther out into the Pacific Ocean. Seth Fried Wessler reported on this for the New York Times and told PRI that when these drug smugglers are captured, they are taken aboard and sometimes chained to the deck until they can be transported to the U.S. for trial. But this waiting period on board can last weeks or even months. And the Coast Guard can do this under the caveat that the smugglers aren't really under arrest until they reach U.S. shores. Wessler says that because of transport delays, the suspected drug smugglers are being carted around for an average of 18 days. President Trump's chief of staff, General John Kelly, has been a big advocate of pushing our borders further, calling drug smuggling an existential threat to the U.S. But we've pushed our borders so far out that according to Wessler, a big question many of these smugglers have is, how are we in the United States right now? And that's a good question. I don't see how they're in the United States either, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't. But, like I said, the U.S., you know, they love chaining people up and barely feeding you and transporting you into your slavery, which is prison. Please tell me what you think and please leave your comment and subscribe and... Don't forget to hit on that notification bell, ladies and gentlemen. Peace, family.